Welcome back to the channel everyone. My name is Nick Armenis and you have come to my stocks channel. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to cover off the best ASX stocks for April 2021. So guys, I do this every month and basically it's the stocks I'm currently looking at. Some of them I've had positions in already uh, and some of them I'm looking to get positions in or I'm just starting to do a bit more info and it's just something I came across that you might be interested. So stay tuned till the very end to get all of my ideas. And if you do enjoy the content, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. Just remember guys, I'm not a financial professional. So I've got this disclaimer here just to let you know that and that you need to do your own research. So the first company, and it actually came to my attention because of someone in this group. I've heard of this business before, but I didn't realize how good it looks on paper. And so the first company I'm looking at is Dust Group Limited, ASX ticker DSK. So what does Dust do? Uh, you may have seen their stores in shopping centers. Now, I hazard to say that most of their customers are female, but you may have seen them in uh, you know your local Westfield or shopping center or something like that. But basically, they operate an omni-channel specialty retail business. And basically, omni-channel means that they have stores and an online presence as well. And they focus on home fragrance products, and they're only in Australia at the moment. So this includes things like candles, air purifiers, essential oils, diffusers, and much more. And if you're a guy like me, you probably have almost no understanding of this business, but are always bewildered as to how much uh, your girlfriend or wife might pay for a candle. So look, candles are a great business because they're super high margin. Um, these stores are quite small too, which is what's really, really cool. But enough of that, let's jump into a bit more on the financials and the position of the business. As of filming this video, it was trading at 287. I think it's slightly higher at the moment. Um, it only IPO'd back in November, um, but it's had a very good run, unlike most IPOs um, since the IPO. So it hasn't been one of those IPOs that fizzle which is a good sign to me, right? If it fizzles, it's generally not a good business and it was overpriced, where this looks to have been underpriced, right? And you might say, oh, it's had a really good run. Um, you know, why would I get in now? Look, it's come off a little bit off its high, uh, but I still think f based on the financials, this business is really good. Like, I mean, look at its PE, 9.26. So it's very, very, very uh, low earnings multiple. And it's got 31 cents of earnings per share. That's got a dividend yield. And that 31 EPS, I believe, is just on a, a half. So you look at the forward dividend yield as well of 10.34%. And you're going, that's a ridiculous yield in this environment. And normally I'd be like, okay, what's going on? Why? is the yield so high normally that means there's a you know there's an issue in the business it's not growing or um they're going to cut the dividend stuff like that but in this case these guys are in a very very good financial position which i'll take you into a bit more detail but basically guys i'll cover off my investment thesis so you can then do your own research into this stock based on you know um an earnings multiple you know their revenue growth their sales, their uh, online growth and the opportunity online. This has a long, long runway ahead of it. And I can easily see this being a four or $5 stock in the next year or so. So my investment thesis, look, it's a very cheap PE ratio, guys. It's 9.26, as we said, or th in between three and four times enterprise value over EBIT, which is quite a cheap multiple. So it had 20 stores being closed in Melbourne due to the lockdowns, even with that, it's uh, had a really big first half. Store sales were up 44%. So guys, where I get all this information from is their their earnings uh, report that they post. So if you go to any stock trading platform or the ASX website, you'll be able to access these documents there. Like for like sales were up 49%. And I've got a background in retail head offices, guys. So I've worked for some really big businesses in the space, some of which were listed. Like for like sales of 49% is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, like for like sales mean uh, same store sales. So they strip out any additional stores that were opened in the period because if you're not measuring like for like and you're just measuring top line growth, if you open new stores, yes, you're going to make more sales, but your existing stores may suffer and that will be reflected in the like for like sales being negative in some of those stores and then positive in the new ones. So it's not to say that uh, you shouldn't open new stores, but it needs to be watched because if you eventually erode 
uh, your core business over time and add and cannibalize sales from all those new stores, so the existing stores start suffering and suffering, um, you need to know that your range may need updating. Um, Normally, when you get a good like-for-like number, it's the range has performed quite well. And basically what that means is the product selection has been on point and customers have come in and they've bought more than the previous period. Um, And that might be more items or that might be higher value items. The other great thing is the online part of their business is up 120%. Still off a very low base though, guys. Very, very low base. It's got a solid balance sheet, no um, long-term debt. Uh, I think they might've had a touch of short-term debt and they've got... uh, 34.9 34.9 million in cash. Sorry guys about my voice. I'm a little bit um, congested at the moment. Uh, online is only around 8% of sales, guys. It did spike during COVID. And I think that's probably why this is being still a little bit mispriced by the market. Uh, people are worried that you know it had a COVID spike. And yeah, it probably experienced a bit of growth, but I don't know if candles were one of those main beneficiaries of a, of a spike in COVID. I know JB, businesses like that, Harvey Norman, people went out and bought freezers. People went in and bought new TVs and stuff for being at home, but I don't know about Ken. Obviously, I don't know. I'm not the target customer, and that's why I've actually taken half a position in this business, uh, and I'll look to double that position uh, if there's a good earnings update on the next update, which I imagine would be like July, August, somewhere there. Uh, currently, the online store is being upgraded, guys. So I can see the online store doubling, if not tripling, over time, um, maybe even more. And that's a really good thing because they're going to be hitting new customers who just don't shop in those stores. Um, best bet is to ask around and see what other people think of this business, guys. So they're also continuing to open new stores. They opened six in the last half, and I believe they're opening three or four in this one, from memory. Uh, stock turns and Jimroy, which are key metrics in retail. Stock turns is how many times you turn your inventory over. So the higher that number, the better. So supermarkets turn it over very fast, where you know a furniture store might not turn it over as fast. And Jim Roy's gross margin return on investment, that improved a lot as well, which means that you know they either had better margins or they sold through, they, they basically got a better return on investment on their inventory dollars spent, right? Solid dividend of 15 cents per share. So it's very, very good dividend, guys. Um, I definitely recommend having a look at this business, have a look through the annual report, go into one of the stores, get a feel for it. But I mean, like I said, I've taken a half a position. Um, that's you know that's just my personal opinion there, um, but it's definitely worth you having a look uh, and, and having a look at uh, getting a bit more information and getting an understanding of this business and see if it is a, a good fit for your portfolio. The next business, guys, is Aussie Broadband ASX ticker ABB. So what does Aussie Broadband do? They're an Aussie telecommunications company, so a bit like Telstra, but these guys mainly sell NBN subscription plans to homes and businesses. They do some VoIP plans as well, uh, but their main business is NBN plans. Currently trading at $2.71. It has had a phenomenal run up since uh, the IPO in October. But I will say this, guys. Uh, This has had a very, very big run up. And unlike uh, Dusk, I think I would be more interested in this business on a pullback of 10 to 20% potentially. I can see this coming down to, you know, 240, 230, 220 even um, in the next kind of earnings report. Depends how good it is as well. I've got a feeling that the next earnings may be a good opportunity to buy it as what I've seen is um, a lot of the broadband orders have been uh, pushed back by the NVN Co, which will impact these guys. It's all they do. Definitely a flag there that you know this may pull back quite hard because they're missing out on orders and it's not their fault. This is out of their control. But on that temporary pullback, don't be surprised if it goes to two, even $2, right? Uh, but that would be a very good opportunity to buy it. I mean, long-term, this business is quite small still, so it's got a very, very good opportunity to grow. It's got a market cap of $515 million. I'm kind of going to be interested at 450 to $400 million. I think that's probably about fair at the moment. Um, but as it keeps growing, I can see this being a billion, $2 billion company, um, and, and that's why I'm interested in it. At the moment, obviously, it's not... Um, making money, but once it starts humming, it, it's in it's in a market share and a, you know a, a growth phase. So you wouldn't expect it to, but you still want to see what's happening in the underlying business. So my investment thesis, guys, it's just based on personal experience and what I've heard from others. These guys have exceptional customer service. People hate like Telstra, uh, Optus is 
customer service that's been outsourced and uh, it's just terrible. You know, they, they don't help you. You're left, obviously, um, with a pretty sour experience and, and people are willing to pay a bit more for something with good customer service that's Australian-based, helpful, and quick at sorting issues because, I mean, like me personally, I run a business, so for me to spend two hours on the phone to Telstra and nothing sorted, that's a big cost to me and my business. So I'm more than willing to pay 20, 30, 50, 100% more for a service if things get sorted quickly and, and it's a fantastic experience. Um, they offer really good plans as well on the NBN guys. They're very fast and the prices, yeah, they're a bit more expensive than some, but they're still reasonable. And uh, for especially businesses, um, really, really good, uh, very quick plans like 250 megabit, one gigabit connections at good prices. Like I said, $520 million market cap, still on, has a very long runway for growth, guys. It's got 4.2 market share, 4.2% of the market share of the NBN in Australia. That's up from 1% just four years ago. So that's pretty impressive. They've you know, quadrupled their market share and I can definitely see them at least doubling or tripling from here. Uh, great business, guys. Um, has had a huge run up, so expect a small pullback. Tons of growth drives in the business, guys, including population growth streaming growth, business demand. So there's heaps of market share out there. It's, the pie is growing, it's not shrinking. Um, and also the remote work increase. What I also like guys having, you know, running a marketing business myself is they've got a very strong marketing team. They do very a very, very good job of it. So definitely something I look at when I look at a business it might be a bit different to some people. So definitely worth having a look at Aussie Broadband guys and seeing uh, and doing a bit more research and seeing if it's right for you. Next guys, a bit different. Uh, 1300 Smiles, ASX ticker ONT. What do these guys do? They own and operate full service dental facilities. Um, they also enable the delivery of services to patients by providing the use of dental surgeries, practice management. So they, they offer this to other dentists as well uh, and other services to self-employed dentists who carry on their own dental practices. So they provide, I guess, a back-end system for dentists that they just wanna do their job. They don't wanna have the hassle of doing all the back-end, right? but they also have their own dental clinics as well. Um, trading at $7.35, this is a $156 million business, but if you have a look at this graph, guys, it's a nice little chart. It's Look at that steady, steady slope um, in an upwards direction. This is a nice long-term hold, pays a nice little dividend of 3.67%. Reasonable PE ratio of 20 times, it's not a high growth business, uh, but this guy's, to me, um, is gonna have some decent growth over the next few years, just based on population uh, and, and other drivers of people let, I guess, their teeth go a little bit during COVID. So there's a bit of catch up work there for them. Um, and I just think it's a it's a nice, safe, boring business. Um, not, you're not, don't expect huge growth from this, but it's, uh, it's one of those core stocks in your portfolio that will be a steady performer and definitely one I would look to add on any kind of serious pullback. My investment thesis for this, guys, is pretty simple. Strong track record of financial performance and share price growth. Just look at um, any of the sort of share trading platforms or anywhere you can get data from, um, you'll have a look that, you know, that it's a steady, steady trend in an upwards trajectory. Very strong recent earnings update. Um, their recent earnings were very, very good. The end of JobKeeper, this is in their own annual report, uh, sorry, in their earnings update. So end of JobKeeper may force smaller operators to close. This is what they're hearing. Um, and while this will enable them to obviously take this market share and will also increase the potential for acquisition. So they'll be able to go through acquisitions and taking market share of people that close. Obviously not a great thing, but um, that's business. And uh, these guys will pick up a lot of those dental practices and, and they'll pay the dentists that you know want to cash out. There'll be people that just want to cash out. They're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, dental is fairly safe, high demand service that has high barriers to entry. You need to be a dentist to do this, right? Um, and the nice little dividend of 3.6% isn't bad either, as well as that share price growth. So definitely worth checking out um, 1300, guys. Uh, ONT is uh, is a very, very good business. And um, yeah, check it out and, and let me know what you think. Okay, guys, uh, as part of this, I'm also going to tell you what I'm seeing in the market kind of undervalued at the moment. And I think online retailers have been hit very, very hard and they're starting to look attractive. So we're looking at things like Kogan, My Deal, which I hold a position in, and Temple and Webster. I think these businesses have been whacked a little hard while they were pandemic beneficiaries and probably ran a little too hot. Uh, I think they've just been smacked way too hard, guys. And I think they're starting to look attractive. Now, 
Best bet would be to wait till the next earnings update. But I mean, if these keep declining, uh, I'll definitely be looking to increase my position in, in my deal and may even take a stake in Kogan and Temple and Webster. But let me know what you think. Do you think that the online retailers have been whacked too hard? Uh, me personally, I think the structural trend is very positive for them and that they're gonna to continue to grow over time as online sales continue to grow. The other beneficiary is building stocks. I'm not sure if you've seen what's been happening in the property market, but we're gonna to have to build more houses and uh, these guys are gonna benefit from this because the materials used so we have Adbury, which is ABC, ASX to ABC, makes cement, lime. Uh, they've got a good little yield. Um, you may have seen ABC cement. Obviously, they're going to benefit because the slabs um, and, and and other things that they sell, uh, they're going to benefit through that, right? Making a house, you need a concrete slab. Brickworks makes bricks, tiles, pavers, things like that, and also has a cross-vesting with um, Washington Sol Patterson. It's a bit on the expensive side, but uh, for a good reason. They've also got a bit of a real estate component to them too, where they'll buy the land, they'll build the bricks on there, and then they'll sell the land to a developer. James Hardy is another one. It's it's quite expensive at the moment, guys, but it's also got um, very uh, good exposure to the US building market, which is on fire at the moment. And the next one is Borrell, building construction materials and multinational exposure. So these are inflation and building growth plays, just something worth having a look at. Uh, Guys, in the next few videos, I will probably go into a bit more detail on these and uh, probably into do a, a video on Dusk. Really great listed fund is Regal, which I will be covering off in a video very, very soon. But this is just something that popped up on my radar and thought you might be interested. But have a great Easter and I will see you all in the next video, guys. Uh, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell.